In this video, we'll be addressing ventilation, air tightness and insulation issues for plumbing, electrical and joinery trades at the finished stage of construction. Failing to properly ventilate the building can increase the risk of mould growth. Should you get your home below 3 cubic metres per hour per square metre 50 pascal, it is recommended that you integrate a heat recovery ventilation system into your home, which provides filtered fresh air combined with a process of recovering the temperature of the exhausted air and applying it to the new incoming air. Joseph, we're getting very close to the final completion of uh, our home, achieving that thermal performance and air tightness, energy efficiency of a house. So we've got our elaborate thermal box in front of us to uh, elaborate on some of those final little requirements. Well, let's look at all the surfaces penetration, including the plumbing, electrical, and also the exhaust. All these components are penetrating what we talk about from the last video, the plasterboard as the air barrier. So we need to deal with them, checking how are we going to reduce any air leaks or the gaps between those holes and the plasterboard. A lot of people worry about their switches or GPO, but in reality, since we are not trying to build a super duper airtight house, so those small amount of leakage is acceptable. But when we talk about something like the plumbing, where you can see there is, an, in general, more than five to 10 mils around them, then we need to do something to treat them. Typically, the conventional way to deal with that hole is just to put a covering plate to make it look good, but it doesn't seal it to be any level of air tightness. What we recommend you to do is to use caulking mastic to seal between the pipe and the plasterboard. Then you can go through the traditional way to put whatever, make it look good. Yeah. What we're not relying on being plumbing, it's often tile, call it a shower recess. We're not going to rely on the tiles, for example. No. It's got to be done at the plasterboard level, the mastic, the caulking. Yes, direct. exactly. That's how it's got to be done. And if you have to do a waterproof membrane behind your tiling, that should be the point where you also do your air seal. And then we talk about the ceiling mounted elements, which commonly we see are downlight or service mounted light. So our typical downlight LED is going to be reasonably airtight. There's no airflow through LEDs because they don't generate the heat. If you want to be particular, you should be looking for the IC4 rated downlights. They are safe to be covered by insulation as well. The unit itself is airtight. It is always best practice that all downlights installed in a home are IC4 rated. And the marking looks like this. They must be installed as per the manufacturer's instructions, which for IC4 rated recess light fittings is usually to be abutted with insulation and covered but must also be installed in accordance with AS3000 2018. If the control gear is separate to the recess light fitting, it must not be covered or sitting on top of insulation. It must be fixed away from the insulation. It is recommended that the following label is displayed at the manhole to reduce the risk of future occupants installing non-IC rated, do not cover recess light fittings and unknowingly cover them with insulation. Also, there's nothing wrong. I always say nothing wrong with a surface mounted. Or nothing a batten, wrong with that. Because they're always going to be really reasonably airtight. Yep. You may got a tiny bit of air leaks through the um, screw holes, but when you look at the whole situation compared to your doors and window gaps, yep. it's uh, nothing. There's far larger gaps than that to worry about. And again, we're not aiming for a completely airtight house. Some of these tiny little leaks around GPOs, light fittings, yep are acceptable and are going to be in 95% of the time. But let's have a look at the cabinet because the this cabinet is important. is where it can go really wrong because typically when we have a GPO inside a cabinet, the GPO would just mount it on the back of the cabinet. But when we look at the sideway, typically they are not really sealed to the plasterboard. 
what did happen is the hole is open to the rest the entire air gap and it opened up path for air to coming in from the wall cavity so whenever you deal with cabinet inbuilt switches always always mount it on the plasterboard and make the opening with the cabinet okay. so you can reach it well it's simple all the air tightness is achieved at the plasterboard always go simple back to the plasterboard and we've said it how many times the air oh, tightness layer <laughs> is mm. the plasterboard and everything's sealed at the plasterboard the other areas are the doors most of the time we have door seal on the side the top of the door but the bottom not always the case so we need to consider some kind of seals is either a drop seal in the more high-end doors or you can install one of those flap seal that will provide a reasonable seal when the door is shut and also the other door that is very commonly omitted for door seal is the door between your home and the garage that door most people think is indoor and not worry about it but there's no conditioning in your garage unless it's yeah. a man cave that's yeah. a different story yeah no and if your garage doors are up and you're facing the wind the amount of wind that blows in and the pressure inside your garage you'll leak massive amount your yes garage. and every time you start your car engine in your garage yep. all the fume will just go indoor we already covered the insulation and the air tightness mm -hmm. now it's the last part of the trinity the ventilation for this program, we recommend all the exhaust system go directly outside. Unlike the traditional home, all the yucky stuff, all the older contaminant just blow and stored in your attic space. You don't really want that to happen. Now, with bathrooms and laundries and wet areas, commonly you can turn them off and on yourself, but you can introduce a humidity center. It's a way better idea to rely on a humidity sensor. First of all, I don't know about you. If I'm using just a switch, as soon as I finish, I leave the room, I switch it off. But typically, especially after shower, the bathroom will stay at a pretty high level of humidity for way longer than 10 to even 15 minutes. So if the exhaust fan have a humidity sensor, it will modulate and greatly, greatly reduce the risk of condensation and mold growth within your bathroom. Great idea. Of course, all these exhausts to the outside need a draft stopper. That's without saying. And for new building, there's no reason why you wouldn't put a draft stopper if it is not already built into your fan. If you want to have a healthy and safe indoor environment, and if you have gas cooktop, always install a CO sensor because you never know if there will be any failure of your gas appliance. And the CO sensor can potentially save your life. Okay, one last thing. Usually the last piece of puzzle constructing a new home is the attic hatch. Typically, you just got a thin piece of plasterboard slotting to shut that hatch door. But when you consider how much insulation all around the hatch, it's wise to do this, where you insulate your attic hatch access. Yep. Look, generally we know that the ceiling insulation throughout a house is gonna be R4, R5, and most likely R6, which is a very high performance of insulation. In this case here, we've got three layers of 25 mil. It's basically R3, okay? So that's what we're adopting as our minimum requirement is a rigid foam at an R3 performance. And that's gonna do the trick beautifully. Oh. Compared to usually nothing. Oh, when you have nothing, or if you try to use even more board to make, it, make up the R6, it may be too hard to exactly. close. Air tightness, insulation, and ventilation are important considerations when building a home. Not ventilating properly on any home can lead to a poor indoor air environment which encourages the growth of mould. Typical problems to look out for at the final stages are building services. It's important that all trades replace and reinstate insulation they have moved in doing their work. Ensure that wet areas are vented directly to the outside. 
For more details on this video and others in the series, refer to the as-built verification checklist available on Sustainability Victoria's website.